hello Lisa here welcome back to my channel welcome if this is your first time visiting me today we are going to do something really different I was inspired to create an entirely new process for the upcoming year it's coming up on the holidays it's coming up on the turning of the year and I want to do something for a year ahead tarot practice but I wanted to approach it completely differently. Now this video is heavily inspired by a conversation that I had with Don Michelle of Don Michelle Tarot. She and I had one of our practice videos. We were talking about sort of plans and we ended up kind of on the topic of year ahead spreads. I really want my frosty mug of, frosty nug of rum fire candle lit. Um, so I'm gonna light this, but anyway, I just want all the candles. Yes, please, all the candles. Okay, I'm gonna pop this one right here. We're gonna have all the candles burning. Okay, the idea to change up how I approach your heads has been on my mind since Don Michelle and I had our chat on our last practice video, which is on her channel. I will link that up in the cards. We got talking about year ahead spreads. It got me thinking about year ahead spreads and the way that I haven't really engaged with mine in the past as actively as I wanted to. I engage with them a bit actively. It can sometimes fizzle out partway through the year, partly because I think I just kind of get disconnected from it. So much time has passed. It doesn't feel very active anymore. And then I saw a really great video by April of uh, April's, I think it's April Tarot and Witchery. Forgive me if I've gotten that wrong out loud, but I will pop her video in the description box as well as up in the cards. She did a video about a, I forget what it was called. I'll be talking about it or in my next um, Tarot Tidbits video, but um, it was around the idea of a kind of a year ahead spread, but the idea is that you put cards for yourself into envelopes and you open them up between, I think it was Yule and the new year, I think. Don't. I, I'm misquoting it, I'm sure, at this point, because I watched it a couple weeks ago and got very, very excited about it, maybe not even that long ago, and then it just sort of inspired this whole, like, chain of events for me, a chain of thoughts on how I want to do my year head spread. So I've decided to go full-on witchy with it and very ritualized, and I thought I would bring you along with me for the process. So here's what I'm going to do. I am I'm selecting some decks that are going to be sort of used for this purpose. And that's going to put these decks kind of out of commission for the year. And I'm okay with that because I think this will allow me to engage with these decks in a really meaningful way and allow me to get kind of build a relationship with them separate from the, the relationship I might build if I pulled them out to work with here and there throughout the year. At least that's my hope. And I'm hoping that as a result, I'll get some really good quality time with some specific pieces of these decks. Man, I'm having a hard time articulating. Let's see if I can get my, my words out. So here's what I've done. I found some vintage envelopes. I thought these were so pretty. They're like a cotton paper. They're super soft. Um, like they feel handmade. They may be handmade. I will link everything I'm gonna use for this practice down below for you so that you can check it out. But I picked up these envelopes and I thought what would be really magical would be to take cards for each month of the year ahead, draw them blind while focusing on each month, tuck them in this envelope and then seal it with a stamp bring a lot of that sort of uh, ritualized energy, that sort of magical energy. So I have my stack of envelopes that I'll be using for this practice. I have some other supplies. So first of all, I have pulled out my um, witchiest fountain pen that I put in this leather thing and then it got stuck. I just inked it up. Uh, so this is my Mandrake fountain pen by Benu, Benu, it's so beautiful. Um, it's literally got a bit of mandrake root ground up in the resin that makes this pen, which just makes it extra witchy to me. Anyways, I inked this up with unicorn blood, which, I mean, hello. It's an ink. It's not actually unicorn blood, obviously, but it is an ink uh, called unicorn blood. Let me just get a piece of paper here. Hold on, let's... Now, I just inked it up, so it's probably going to take a bit for the ink to flow down into the nib. Let's see if we've made any progress. It's going to take a bit because I syringe inked it. Let's see if I can coax it along gently. Okay, here's what we're going to do because I don't want to mess up my nib. I'm going to tap and see if I can get it started. Um, but that's why this is sitting upright against my candle here. So let me pop that back in, keep that kind of pointed down for a minute. We'll figure that out. Um, in here, I have some supplies. I'm very excited about this. So I have a sealing wax stamp and I got one with a pentacle on it, like so. Now this one came in a set. There's also, you can change out the heads. I also have a tree of life and a triple moon 
pentacle. These are going to be uh, a new part of my uh, ritual kit because I do like to do petitions and things. I think this is going to be great. And then I got some sealing wax in this gorgeous kind of reddish color. And this is a sealing wax. Um, <laughs> I say this, it was off the frame. This is a sealing wax melting spoon. So my understanding is you need about two of these pellets for a stamp this size. And so I'll be sealing the envelopes with a stamp. So I've got my sealing wax spoon, melting spoon. And then I have, um, this is actually my incense burner, uh, but it's got an adjustable, let me just show you this. It's got like this little grate like this. And so I can put loose incense in this little grate and I have, I've used this quite a bit, um, but I can adjust the height of this little tray. So I've got it quite close to the flame. I'll show you, Let's see, it's not lit, but I've got it down quite low like that. <laughs> I'm gonna toss my stuff everywhere so that I can rest my little spoon on here and hopefully not make too much of a mess so that this can heat and melt my wax. Um, I may have to make some adjustments, but that's my goal. So this is gonna be setting off to the side so that I can pour my waxes uh, onto my envelopes and seal them up. So that's the goal. Yeah, so see, you can see the color. They're really quite shimmery and pretty. It's like kind of like a, a wine red or like a bricky red kind of color. Copper red, that's the word I'm looking for. It's a metallic red. Um, I think that's gonna go really nicely. So I'm gonna set that off to the side. And I've just got a little uh, box that I saved from a makeup product. And I'm gonna set this aside. This is gonna hold all my stuff when I go to put it away later. So I'm just getting myself arranged here because what I'm gonna do is kind of go into more of a, I don't know if I wanna say like a meditative space, but I'm definitely gonna go into a very uh, ritualized space while I do this. Let me show you the decks that I'm gonna be using. So what's gonna form sort of the um, foundation for this is the Nameless One Tarot. Now I picked this up. This is a really um, magical feeling deck. And what I wanna do is use this as the, I'm gonna have one of these cards in my, in my envelope for each month of the year. So I'm gonna shuffle and draw from the Nameless One. And I have the big beautiful, hold on. I have the big beautiful grimoire, right? <laughs> so my goal is that when I pull this deck, when I open up the envelope each month, I'll be inspired to really dig into that grimoire and read thoroughly about that singular card. It will make this deck accessible. I can kind of digest it a little bit at a time. Yes, I'll only be working with 12 cards throughout the year, but it'll give me that opportunity to sort of work with them really intimately. I thought about only using the Oracle cards so that I could still use the tarot deck throughout the year. But I feel like this is the kind of deck that I'm gonna to wanna to be able to really just sink into and read everything about. The grimoire goes quite deep and it'll give me that opportunity to sort of get to know this deck on a more intimate level. And it feels really magical for this kind of a process. So I'm going to be shuffling and pulling one card from the nameless one into for my envelopes. I'm also going to be pulling one card from the wisdom of the Kaliak. I'm trying to learn how to pronounce this better, y'all. It's a struggle because I'm, I'm not Scottish. Um, Wisdom of the Kaliak, I think. Somebody feel free to correct me. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I've talked to Scottish people. I'm trying. I'm working on it. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> I'm going to be pulling one card from this deck for each of my envelopes. Now, this deck has, I believe, let's see how many cards. Oh, I forget. Let's say 30, I think it's a little bit less than 30. Um, so I'll be pulling one card and this will just let me work with the Kaliak as well throughout the year, which is something I've already been doing, but this gives me just a more organized way to do it. So I'll be pulling one card and this has a pretty light guidebook. So I feel like working with pulling this out and reading the, the grimoire and then pulling this out and reading the entries in this little guidebook is gonna be a pretty easy to manage practice. So I've got that there. So I'll be pulling one of these. So one nameless one, one wisdom of the Kaliak card. I'm also going to pull one card from the creative consciousness healing deck. Now this is a deck that I wanna do more work with anyway next year, but what I think is really special about this is that for every one of these cards, which it does have a very healing bent, but for every one of these cards, you also get in the guidebook a sort of visualization you can do, a creative visualization here, which is kind of like a mini meditation as well as a journal prompt. So I feel like this pulls in these sort of healing energy, it pulls in an aspect of that inner child work. So what I feel like I'm getting here is I'm getting tarot for 
that sort of inspiration, deep layers that I can get from tarot. I've got something from a divine feminine source that I'm working with right now, the Kaliak. And then I have something for healing. And really this, I feel like this deck focuses kind of on inner child healing, which is an inherent part of my practice. So I feel like I'm kind of ticking three main boxes of things that are important to me if I was going to have like sort of a monthly special spread that I'm doing, because essentially that's what I'm building. I'm building a spread so that when each month, when I open up the envelope for that month, I'll have a tarot, a Kaliak card, an Oracle, and I will also have a three card Lenormand reading. This is the Claire de Lune Lenormand. I believe this one is out of print now. This is um, Anna Turian's little Lenormand. And I have multiple Lenormand decks, so being without one is not a hardship at all. The biggest challenge for me was figuring out which decks I was going to be okay not, you know, having readily available to work with in other ways throughout the year, and I think these are good choices. Now, the interesting thing about Lenormand is that there are 36 cards in a standard classic Lenormand deck, and 12 months means I get 12 three-card readings. So I'm going to be shuffling this deck and pulling a three-card reading for each month. So I'll have a three-card Lenormand reading for the month, a tarot, a Kaliak card, and a creative consciousness healing card. And when it comes to working with this spread on a month-by-month -month basis, all I'll need to be referring to is my Wisdom of the Kaliak book and my Creative Consciousness healing book for my meditation and the Nameless One Grimoire, which will be the heaviest reading I'll be doing month, month to month. So that is the goal of this spread. So these are going to be the things I'm going to be working with. So what I'm going to do just to sort of prep myself in the space, and I'm probably going to do this and then just um, bring you in while I, I'll play music or something while I do it, um, I'll put it on speed up, but I'm going to be really focusing on every single month as I go and doing each sort of shuffle and draw thoughtfully each time. Does that make sense? And then I'll seal the envelope, put it away and work on the next month. And then I'll have a stack of envelopes to use. So that is the goal. That's how we're gonna proceed. Okay, so first thing I need to do is check my pen. Let's see if we've got any movement here in my ink. Aha. It's working. I had a little tiny bit of trace other ink in my nib. Perfect. So I've got my ink ready to go, which means I am pretty much ready to begin. So I think what I'm going to do as far as the order of operations is put away all these boxes, get them out of my way. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to protect my table, I'm going to use this pad underneath any writing that I do just to make sure this paper feels like it will definitely bleed. It's very, very soft and fuzzy. And then when I write on the envelope, I'm actually going to just tuck this like half folded piece of paper in so it doesn't bleed all the way through. I'll write the month. It feels a little lumpy. That's okay. I'll write the month. Um, and as I do that, I'll be warming the wax and getting everything ready. I'll shuffle, draw, tuck everything into the envelope without looking, without peeking. And then I'll seal the envelope up and I will set it aside. So I'm going to do the first one and we will go from there. So I'm going to try this by just having the spoon resting over here on this, um, on this little incense burner thing. If it turns out that it's not going to melt the wax fast enough, then I will just hover it literally over a flame and do it that way, which blackened the bottom of my spoon, but I don't care. So we will see how that goes. Wish me luck. People are honking outside. There's traffic. It's fine. Okay, I'm gonna just concentrate. We're thinking about January.
So that is it. I did all of my year ahead draws. The sealing wax was a lot of fun. This whole process felt really super magical and I'm excited to break each one of these open in the month. And what I can do with this is do it on a special day, like the full moon. I might do my, like I might do the July one on my birthday. Like I can definitely do it any way that I want, but at some point in the month, I'll have this special reading to dig into. And when I open this up, what I'll be doing is pulling out my Wisdom of the Kaliak or K uh, shoot, Kaliak. <laughs> I'm still working on it, y'all. I'll read about this. I will have a little visualization to do with this. And then I'll be able to get into the Nameless One Grimoire and read like this nice, big, juicy entry about whatever card I pull. So like most of the time, if you missed my walkthrough of the grimoire for this deck, for the nameless one, I mean like you get a lot. So like for example, this is the five of branches, which is the five of wands. One, two, three, four, five pages. Um, like, yeah. And I also have a full image. So this is our five of wands here, five of branches. So I'll be able to get into this, read it really thoroughly. I've got a ribbon bookmark built into this grimoire so I can bookmark the page I'm working on. But I'll get to really just like sort of pour over this book, read a little bit about the Kaliak card, do a little visualization. And then I have a practical three card Lenormand reading that I can do as well. So I feel like this is just going to be really juicy practice in 2024. I'm really, really excited. And it's like I have all these like little surprises. So once again, thank you to uh, April over at Tarot and Witchery for your video because it really sort of was the spark. And thank you to Don Michelle for our chat about the year ahead reading because it really just got me thinking about wanting to do something different this year. And I'm really excited about this. So I'm just going to set these over here on my little, um, I have a little shelf right in front of me here. I'm gonna set them there. And then come January, I will dig into this. And I will definitely report back about what I think of this, but it felt really witchy, it felt really magical, felt really sacred. And I'm really excited about it. So yeah, anyways, I will have links down below everything I used. So these uh, envelopes, if I can find them in the US, I got them in Canada, but um, if I can find them, I will link them as well as the sealing wax I used and the little um, stampy thingy. <laughs> um, but the, the little spoon that I used, um, ooh, it's gonna be fun to clean up. I just gotta rinse it really well, but it's um, this came with the sealing wax. So that was a nice deal. And you can just do this over a tea light or whatever. I This little setup, I think it's still quite warm. Let's see. Yeah, it's still pretty warm, but my little um, incense burnery thing did do a really good job. I've got a grate to clean up pretty well, but it did a really good job. So um, I feel like it would have been a little trickier to just hold the whole time to melt it. Um, you can get little like things that hold the spoon for you. So if you decide to go this route, you do have options for that. But anyways, um, I will link what I got and um, then you can take a look. Oh, I did have one envelope. Which month was it? Oh yeah, it was this one. Uh, August. August really wanted to run off of the envelope a little bit. I don't know what happened there, um, but it was kind of running away on me. So yeah, definitely recommend doing this on a surface that will protect your tabletop or whatever. Um, but whenever I got wax where it shouldn't be, it picked off pretty easy because that's kind of the point of this stuff is that you can like lift it up. And you can also get sealing wax and then um, there's like little double-sided stickers like that you can basically, I think there's like molds you can pour the wax into and then stamp it and stick it to a sticker so you don't have to seal directly on, but I really wanted to seal directly on. So that is what I've done. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this gave you an idea for different ways you can create a practice for yourself, especially if you've got extra decks. The, the hardest thing about this really was picking decks that I was going to be okay with working with in this way because once the cards are sealed up in here, I obviously have incomplete decks. So I have to had to be committed to having these three decks be incomplete. The Lenormand was less of an issue because I used up all 36 cards. So they're all in here. Um, but yeah, anyways, let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Thanks for sharing the space with me and coming along with me for this. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Remember, if you are enjoying my videos, but you're not subscribed, hit subscribe. There's about 30% 30, 30 of you, 28% of you, something like that, that are not subscribed currently. So make sure you subscribe. As always, an extra big thank you goes out to my Unicorn Fam channel members. Thank you so much for all of your support of the channel. It really, really makes a difference and allows me to be more creative here, do more things, and really just accomplish so much. So thank you so, so much for that. And to all of you watching, liking, subscribing, commenting, I really, really appreciate it. And until the next video, may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye, y'all.